Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Canadian Retro. I have another pickups video for you here. Um, today's journey was quite interesting actually. I'll give you a rundown basically right now of what was going on. I didn't have a whole lot of time to go out today to go thrifting, so this time around um, I only stopped in at two places. I probably could have hit up three, but um, I kept, I was really interested in the one place that I stopped in because they had a whole bunch of games, so I was like checking them out and all this kind of stuff, and I just took up the whole time that I had basically there. So I went to a thrift shop first though, and well, it was Goodwill, and they didn't have anything there for me. So I went to one of my usual spots, which was, which is a Talese, um, which is also a, th a thrift kind of shop, sort of like Value Village. And I went in to this place, and I'm really glad that I did. When I walked in, it was quite interesting actually. Um, I just got to the game section and as I'm rounding the corner to go to the games, um, there's a gentleman there and he's loading up sort of like this on the whole shelf. Like he's grabbing the whole thing. He's got it basically in his arms. He's a pretty big guy so he was able to grab like just a ton of games. He's walking around like this with a stack of games and there's a bunch of like PS1 titles and stuff like that in the stack that he was carrying around. Um, I was just like, oh my god, I literally missed this by like a fraction of a second. Like had I been there five minutes earlier, I would have, you know, I would have sort of struck gold kind of thing was the thought going through my mind. Um, turns out what he grabbed wasn't really super valuable necessarily, but um, I was still, I couldn't really tell that because I could only, I could see some of the titles. Um, some of them were PS1 titles, they're really hard to see, like their labels were, you know, so thin and everything on the on the side because it's just the side of a CD case so I couldn't really see it from a distance and it's not like I could uh, jump into this guy's arms and actually look at them or something like that so I sort of kept my distance I followed him around a little bit after looking at the the remaining games that were left there um, and I sort of followed him around a little bit because I thought that he might um, end up putting some of them back and if he did then I wanted to sort of jump on the opportunity to get the games from him so he did exactly what I thought he was going to do though he did go back into the game section and start unloading some of the games that he had picked up because I think he sort of just he like literally scooped them all up and I think he had a moment and kind of went back and went through them and put ones back that he didn't necessarily want um, turns out though that that word really worked to my benefit so I went over and I picked up the titles that he put back. Now a lot of these are racing titles as far as the PS1 stuff goes, but some of them I really wanted, wanted to add in the collection. One of them actually has a little bit of value to it, and uh, the other ones, well, you know, I didn't have in my collection so I thought I would um, add them in, basically. So the first title that I picked up is this one right here. Unfortunately it's not complete but it's uh, Ridge Racer Type 4. Looks pretty cool actually, I don't think I ever played this one back in the day. Pretty popular title though. Uh, the unfortunate thing about this is it's missing its manual and apparently this game is two discs and it's missing the second disc. Um, I did get a 20% discount off on this because of that, so I ended up paying um, you know, just under three dollars for it. It, it was priced at three dollars, but I ended up paying you know twenty percent less on it because it's missing those things. And I brought that to the attention of the cashier, so she adjusted the price for me. Another one that I paid three dollars for is this one right here, Jet Moto Two. Uh, pretty cool. I have been looking into getting this title. It's complete. I have been looking to get into this title or get it into my collection rather, but. Uh, it sort of not really eluded me, but I've seen it online like it goes really cheaply. But the problem is, um, you know, with shipping and all that kind of stuff, it's just not really worth picking it up. You end up paying more for shipping than you did the game's worth. So I found it, you know, finally uh, in the wild, and I thought I would add it into my collection. The cases on most of these are cracked and things, but I'll be able to replace them. Uh, case in point is this one right here. I uh, also paid three dollars for and you can see this gigantic crack in the case back there But it's just a CD case. So it's not a big deal. You can always replace it. It's Need for Speed V Rally again three dollars for this one and The disc is again in you know similar shape to the other ones are a little bit scratched up, but it's not too bad It'll play the next one is a game that's actually uh, quite interesting to me because I used to play this one back in the day um, 
my roommate was really into Formula One. Uh, I didn't really know a lot about Formula One racing to tell you the truth back then. And he, uh, he got me into like watching Formula One. So we used to watch, you know, the races and stuff like that. And then um, I also had this game. I picked up this game back then really cheaply actually. And it's Formula One 2000. And so we used to play this quite a bit. It was a ton of fun. I uh, got pretty good at it. I bet you I'm probably pretty horrible at it now, but um, the disc itself is in similar shape to the other one. It's a little bit scratched up, but not too bad. Uh, but just happy to add that one back into my collection just because I used to have so much fun playing this one. Has has a lot of like, uh, you know, nostalgia or whatever to it for me. And the last one of these racing games, that is the PlayStation 1 racing games, is uh, one that apparently has some value to it. It's not extremely valuable, but considering, you know, it's a PS1 racing game, uh, it has more value than probably the other ones combined. Uh, that's Colin McRae Rally 2.0 PlayStation, and it has new arcade mode, which must be different from Colin McRae Rally 1.0, which probably didn't have arcade mode. So, I don't know if that's the deciding factor that makes this one more valuable than some of these other racing games, but I looked this one up because I'd never really seen this before, and it turns out that it has more value, so that's kind of interesting. So I ended up picking that one up too. Um, also sitting there were a number of uh, other games as well that I picked up, so it was quite the haul actually um, in this first part of this visit to this place. And uh, the first one here I'll show you is Monster Trucks Mayhem for the Wii. I don't usually collect Wii titles. I, I think I accidentally really bought this one. I sort of um, had so many games in my hand that, and I had looked at this one and I thought I had not included it, but I picked it up anyways, but it's not a big deal because it's definitely worth more than I paid for it. Um, this one here I paid $5 for. The disc is in perfect shape. So pretty cool, uh, you know, Monster Truck kind of game for the Wii. Um, I, might, I might give it a try or see if I can sell it. It's definitely worth more than the five bucks I paid for it. And the next one is a really fun game. I do remember playing this a little bit. Didn't get totally into it or anything like that, but uh, it's pretty funny. It's Rayman Raving Rabbids 2. And that one here, I also paid five dollars for. And again, manual's in great shape. And the disc is in superb condition, it's a little dirty or whatever, but it's in like almost perfect condition. So there's that as well. Um, I have a few Wii titles already, I might just try to bundle them and sell them off or something like that. I don't really have anything that's like uh, Mario related kind of things. If I was going to collect for the Wii, I think I would just basically get like Mario and you know Zelda kind of games and stuff like that. I don't think I'd really get into the whole like trying to get a whole ton of games like I sort of do with these other systems. Um, the next title that I picked up, really happy to add to my Xbox collection, my original Xbox collection, which is Leisure Suit Larry Magna Cum Laude. And again, this one here, uh, similar to the PlayStation games, it was $2.99. And it's in really great shape. I actually just got one sticker there that I'll be taking off. The uh, manual's in great shape. And the disc, I've already checked this out, I do remember it's in like superb condition. It's in really great shape, it's almost brand new. So that's pretty awesome right there for $3, can't beat that. So I also picked up, and I don't really typically collect for this system that much, but I couldn't leave it there because I really didn't want a reseller picking it up or scooping it up and you know trying to make a massive profit off of it. I'd rather, um, you know, see that it ends up in a good home kind of thing, which is my home. <laughs> but it's Herb's uh, Sims in the City. This one here still has like some factory wrapping on it, like the plastic, but it's not uh, sealed. So it does, see it is open at the top, it just has the plastic all around the rest of it. And then inside it's totally complete. So you can see the cartridge right there. And, See the cartridge right there and uh, the manual and all that good stuff. So not bad. This one here was also for five dollars. So not too bad of a deal at all for that one. 
when I went to pay for all these games, I actually got 10% off because I used a coupon that I had at the store. But uh, when I was finished that transaction, I actually uh, sort of looked over and when I looked up from the counter, I saw uh, this game sitting over in the books section and I didn't really notice it before, but I noticed it right as I was about to leave. So I went over and I ended up buying it and it's 13 for the GameCube. I do have this, I believe, on the PS2. I don't know if I have it on the Xbox, but now I definitely have it on the GameCube. And it's complete. I don't know, I do remember having this, so I might even have it on the GameCube already. But even if I do, this one here is in perfect shape. So I'll probably, if I do have this, I'll end up swapping it for this one here, because it's in excellent shape. So I made that transaction, so that was my second transaction at the same place. And then I was going into my car, and I, kind of dropped off the stuff and then I sort of came to the realization that I really need to go to the washroom. So uh, I went back into the store because they have washrooms in there and I'm really glad that I did because the best finds of the day, well the best, one of the best things I found for the day uh, was then in the game section. So I mean I went through the front entrance, I passed through the game section and as I did I spotted this and I'm so glad that I did. Um, the first Thing that I saw there was a bunch of well first thing I saw was the was the final item which I'll show you later but the first the other things that I saw there were a bunch of uh, game gear games now I'm not a game gear collector so I didn't bother picking up most of them but I did pick up one title for five dollars I picked up Sonic the Hedgehog and it came in this case um, I've already opened this up before so I know you know that's in pretty decent shape it just has a couple of scratches on the back of it but nothing like too, too bad, really. But yeah, so Sonic the Hedgehog for Game Gear. Thought I'd pick that up. The last title, on the other hand, is something that I think is pretty stellar, pretty amazing. Um, it's not like epically valuable or anything like that, but it's definitely one that I wanted to add in my collection. And I know that price charting has it probably around $15. And I know the resellers and the pawn shops and stuff like that in my area probably would be charging upwards of $20 to $25 for this title. So I'm really happy to pick this up for $5. I picked up Banjo-Kazooie. It's really awesome. <laughs> um, the, the label's in good shape. The cartridge itself is kind of like dirty and stuff like that. There is sort of one line of like this gold, looks like gold marker or something like that goes across here but otherwise the label is um, pretty close to perfect and it's in great shape it's not going to be worn or anything like that otherwise um, this is in pretty darn good shape so happy to uh, pick this one up to add into my N64 collection uh, that was basically my adventures of the day um, thank goodness for having to go to the washroom where I never would have found this game right here uh, interesting how sometimes those little inconveniences can uh, lead to something really awesome. This is probably the uh, best thing that I picked up for the entire day or the thing that I appreciate the most. Um, again, you know, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Feel free to thumbs up this video and comment down below as well. I like to uh, read all the comments and I try to comment on as many as I can uh, when you guys do leave comments and I'm always interested in what you have to say. Uh, some people have some interesting things like to add to what I've said or um, some sometimes people talk about different memories they have with different games and stuff like that and I really like that. That's one of the aspects of doing these videos that I really appreciate is uh, hearing from other people and you know their finds and things like that. So you know make sure that if you're watching this feel free to comment down below because I really do enjoy that. Thanks again for watching though and I will see you all later.